The video is already pretty long by itself, so I won't take too much of your time with the intro. What's up everybody, my name is Peter and welcome to this new Unity tutorial. Today I'll be showing you a feature that's very interesting and useful but not many people know about and not enough people use in their own projects. And I'm talking about scriptable object singletones, which are scriptable objects that no matter where they are located in your project, you're always gonna be able to find from anywhere in your code without the need of referencing them in the inspector or anything like that. If you like the video or find it useful, I will ask you to consider subscribing. And this said, let's get started. Okay, so in Unity, let's right click into the project window and create a new C-sharp script. Let's call it singleton scriptable scriptable object. Let's hit enter, wait for it to compile and then double click it and open it in our text editor of choice. As you would expect, this is a mono behavior class like any other class created from within Unity. Let's delete anything from inside of the body of the class and let's change the inheritance to the scriptable object. Okay, great. Now we want to make the singleton scriptable object class of a generic type. So let's open the triangle bracket, type in T and close the triangle bracket. And we also want to set a constraint on this generic type T. So let's type in where after the scriptable object inheritance T inherits from singleton scriptable object of type T. And I and I understand that this might look a little bit confusing if you've never seen anything, anything like this before but I will leave links to the C-sharp documentation on generic types in the description, so make sure you check them out if you don't know what this all means. Great, now we want to define the instance. So let's add a private static member of type T called instance. And as you will probably realize, being this private, we are gonna need a public static property of type T called instance with a capital I to get it from outside of the class. So let's define the instance and also define a getter for this property. Let me format anything, everything correctly. And by default, in our getter, we are just saying return instance. But as you can probably tell by the way things are at the moment, instance is never assigned. So it's, this is always gonna return a value of null. So the first thing we need to do now is add an if statement and say if instance is equal to null, then assign it. And to assign it, we're gonna do this. Let's create a new array of type T called assets. And let's give it the value returned by resources dot load all of type T at any path. Any path is represented by an empty string. And what this is gonna do is actually go through all of our assets, look for folders called resources, and load any scriptable object of type T that is found in the resources. And now we might stumble upon two, one of two scenarios. So the first scenario is we did not find any scriptable object of type T in the resources. So all we want to do is type if assets equals to null or assets dot length is less than one. Then we want to make sure that user know it, knows it. So throw new system dot exception and let's write could not find any singleton scriptable object instances in the resources so that the function throws an error and we can see it in the console and create one if we need it the other option we can actually stumble upon is else, um, else if assets.length is greater than one. So if we find more multiple instances of the scriptable object, we're just taking the first one, but let's make sure that we know. Let's make sure that we send a message to the console in the form of a log warning. And let's say multiple instances of the singleton scriptable object found in the resources. Great, now that we told the user that we found more, let's in any way, so if we found multiple or we found one, let's set instance equal to the first element of the assets. So asset zero and asset zero is gonna be the only one if we found the on only one instance 
or it's gonna be the first of many if we found multiple. Okay, so now let's go back to Unity and create a new script to actually implement the singleton scriptable object class. So what I'm gonna do is right click, create a new C -sharp script and let's call this game settings, for example. Now, again, let's wait for it to compile and open it again into the text editor. Let's delete anything from inside the body of the class and this time let's make it inherit from singleton scriptable object of type game settings. And now you might see some similarities. In fact, the generic type T of singleton scriptable object now inherits from a singleton scriptable object of type T. So this constraint is actually respected from the game settings class. And this is actually all we need to do to implement the class. Now we can have some public members like public string uh, game title and public string game version, for example. And we're gonna be able to modify these from the inspector. The only thing we need to do is add a create asset menu attribute and give it a file name, game settings, and a menu name, so scriptable objects slash game settings. Okay, great, let's go back to Unity and wait for it to compile. And then let's create a scriptable object of game settings. The first thing we wanna do is right click and create a folder called resources because resources.load.pol is only going to be able to find assets into the resources folder. So resources, and make sure you spell it with a capital R, not like I did. And now right click into it and create new scriptable objects, you see we now have a new menu here, game settings. And this is gonna create a scriptable object of type game settings. Let's game, give a title to our game, so a tutorial game. And let's call version 1.0.0, for example. Now we're gonna create a new empty game object, uh, test. And we're gonna add a test component simply for testing Purposes. So, test, let's open the class once it compiles, and let's write in start, we want to debug.log, well, first we want to go string, game title equals to uh, game settings, dot instance, dot game title, string, game version, we want to say game settings dot instance dot game version and say debug dot log you're playing uh, plus game title plus space version plus game version and this is gonna say in the in the console what game we're playing and what version. Let's now go back to Unity once again and simply hit the play button. Well, open the console here, clear it and hit the play button. And as you will be able to see, now we in the console we have a log message that says you're playing tutorial game version 1.0.0. And actually if I change the value of here, like for example, let's see, let's say we upgraded it to 1.0.1 .1, and once again we hit the play button. It will now say you're playing tutorial game version 1.0.1. .1. So the instance is automatically found in the assets in the resources and we do not need to do anything else. If we, for example, create a second instance of this type, you will see that this is gonna be the first one. So if I change the game settings we created earlier to uh, version 2.0.2, .2, for example, and we're gonna run the, the, the game, you'll see that multiple instances of the singleton scriptable object found in the resources. So the game is telling us we found more than one. There is only supposed to be one. And then it took the first one that it loaded. So the first one that it loaded happened to be the first one that we created. And you will make you will need to make sure that the one that gets loaded is the one that you want to get loaded. 
but my suggestion is only have one in the project. To, uh, to make you understand what the generic type is, we can create a new scriptable object class, for example, uh, let's say scriptable object name, sorry, new C sharp script, let's call it test scriptable object, let's double click it, and as we did again, let's make it generic from the correct class and I create asset menu attribute file name. <coughs> and let's add a generic field like public string foo equals to hello word. Now in our test class, let's also debug dot log um, test scriptable object dot instance dot foo and going back to unity you will now see that if we create a new test scriptable object it's gonna be hello world and we can put some exclamation marks behind it and when we run a game we'll be able to see in the console that we're playing tutorial game version 2.0.2 .2, as we would expect from the instance of the game settings scriptable object and then hello world with a lot of exclamation marks from the instance of the test scriptable object and this is actually all this is all you need to know because now when you define one scriptable object that is also a singleton you will be able to find it from any class that you need as long as you define one asset in one asset in the project that was it that was it thank you so much for watching if you made it to this point and please feel free to leave a comment down below to tell other people and the algorithm how great it was so that it gets recommended to more people i can take myself seriously when i say this Anyway, in the description you will find links to the documentation of every single topic I talked about today. And as always, I've been Peter, you've been an excellent audience, and in case you decide to stick around, see you next time.